Welcome back to VBuzz, guys. We're still here with me, Swarna, and my co-host for the day, Ruben. Now, our first guest is an award-winning Malaysian-born composer mm -hmm. who has won several Cameroonian Arts Awards for her compositions and artistic direction. Jotsna Prakash has also composed for the Malaysian Philharmonic, or Philharmonic Orchestra, right. and she teaches at the Temple of Fine Arts. But before she became known as a musician, she was quite the talented mm. Indian classical dancer. She joins us today to tell us about what she's working on next. Right, exciting stuff. Jatsna, thank Hi. you so much for being here. And of course, you know, we know your husband as well, Prakash Kandisami, who's also been in the show before. Yes. Uh, so, you know, I'm kind of excited about the fact that you, you were a dancer before you were a musician. Yeah. Uh, when did you sort of discover that passion for music? Actually, that's been there forever. I've mm. always loved music. Um, I joined TFA as a dance student. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that kind of got me into dancing a little bit more than mm -hmm. music. I learned music formally, right. but I play by ear. Oh, nice. So oh. I learned piano, but because I play by ear, I didn't do so well in... The uh, technical st side of yeah. things. Right. right. So I stopped after grade five. Right. And then I went on to take dance more seriously. Music has always played a very big part. Right. At, at what age did you start, uh, you know, dancing? Dancing. Yeah. Uh, the age of eight. 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 Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. When did you decide to focus mm. on music then rather than dance? I think I felt music was more for me um, mm. than dance. I mean, so, yeah. When did you decide to kind of make that switch? Yeah. I actually never made that switch. Music has always been, it was always there in the background. Right. It just, became the foreground right. after so you, a while, yeah. So right. so you're passionate about, about music yeah. mainly, but do you still dance today? Dance helped me actually give music a kind of mm. a, a, mm. A, a visual maybe, right. you know, or mm. something like that. I, even now when I write, I right. prefer to listen to my music and feel like that I could dance to it mm. or someone could yeah. dance to but, it. But I mean, then again, dance and music go hand in hand, right? True, so, for sure. True. For yeah. sure. Now, was there any other kind of training that you've undergone with your music apart from piano? I've done some uh, Carnatic vocal okay. as a young mm. girl. I've also learned a little bit of Hindustani music. So I've got a little bit of everything. Nice. Right. What about, you know, Bharatanatyam? Yeah, I learned Bharatanatyam. I learned Odissi. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and we in, T in TFA, we did a lot of other stuff as well. We learned folk dancers. Yeah, yeah, did, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so a bit of everything. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, a major, basically, a major breakthrough in your career was uh, when you had the opportunity to create music for, you know, the Temple of Fine Arts yes. uh, version of Butterfly Lovers, yeah. uh, which you presented in New York, right? Uh, so tell yeah. us a little bit about that experience. We actually presented something else in New York, but Butterfly Lovers was the first opportunity for me to actually become, uh, to write a full-fledged uh, mm. musical, mm. Uh, you know. So um, myself and Kumar Kategesu and Prakash, yeah. the three of us, we, we, we wrote the music for Butterfly Lovers and that was uh, in you know, so long ago. <laughs> but in New York, we actually form a group. We, the three of us uh, performed together as a group, sitar, tabla and piano. So we used to take that and right. perform that quite often and all over the place. We, yeah. And that was your first time writing a full yes, musical? Yes, it was. What was that was. experience like? Yeah. Especially oh, because, I mean, maybe your technical aspect. Was all three of them were playing by ear as well? How did yeah, you? Yeah, we actually most that's Indian that's musicians incredible. play by ear. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it was good. I mean, it's just that we didn't have a budget. Right. We didn't have much money. Mm. So we did a lot of the music by ourselves mm. and we could only get like a few sessionists in there mm. to play. So if we could ever do it again, I think right. we do it a little differently. Nice. Right. But yeah. was it like every single one of you sort of played by ear or was yeah, it? Yeah, we do. Oh, yeah. that's brilliant. Right. Uh, you know, tell us, tell us a little bit about, you know, one of your performances. Which one? Which, uh, which one's your most memorable? Yeah. I mean, you've done the so many. The most memorable one. Um, okay, we've done like so many productions over the years. We've done for dance, we've done music for dance. I, we did a show called Inside Out. Mm -hmm. okay. That yeah. garnered a lot of yeah. uh, attention mm -hmm. uh, in 2004 because it was music to dance. So mm. we did a kind of a collaborative work with Umesh Shetty. Oh, nice. Oh, yes. Okay, wow. They had a company called the Inner Space, uh, Inner Space Performing Arts Company. Right, right, right. It's also been on the show as well. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. correct. Well, what was, what was that about? Uh, that show was to show that in TFA, we actually learned different genres. We learned Bharatanatyam, um, Odissi, Kuchupudi. But at the end of the day, as a dancer, mm. the product that comes out of mm. TFA yeah. is someone who is able to negotiate all those dance forms. Yeah. Right, and that's the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in this day and age where everything 
everything is so competitive in in the entertainment industry mm. you know how how key is it you think that you know one should be f super versatile with every form of you know dance music um it's it's actually it's a very difficult uh question to answer because mm. some may say that if you're going to learn everything yeah. you're going to be jack of all trades yeah. and master of none exactly right yeah. but uh then again living in this country i think it's even more relevant that you need to know mm. what is happening around you you need to know um you know in india for example right there are so many various forms dance forms yeah. and it's a bit weird for me to say that i know one and i don't know the other yeah uh -huh. right okay yeah. so i think we're coming from that point mm. of view yeah. where we need to know and we need to understand and as dancers if you are a dancer or a musician you should be able to negotiate and move with any kind of right. musician That's any true. kind of dancer you should be able to interact yeah, yeah. so that all helps with your vocabulary mm. Yeah, for sure. I couldn't agree more. As an artist, yeah. you should. Yeah. And, and and if you're passionate about yeah. it, I'm sure you will it make makes the sense, effort. Yeah. It? yeah. Um. But as a composer, you know, when you're writing your music mm. or when you're writing your dance, mm. do you think of the other, and how it will kind of work uh -huh. together? Yeah. Well, it depends. If I'm thinking about writing for dance, then yes, I would have to imagine what it would look like or what right. the music is going mm. to how it's good, how it's going to enhance the movements of the uh, So you're choreographer. choreographing it in your head. Well, I would normally have the choreographer do that and come right. and tell me I like the music mm. like this or or uh, or mm. not like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Nice. You know? Yeah. Well, going back to your performing days and kind of how you did the whole New York scene and stuff like that yeah. in your own individual way. How did that open doors for you yeah. uh, when you came back? Um we actually went on our own right. as in Tepler Fine Arts. So yeah. in terms of opening doors, it didn't really open mm -hmm. doors for us. Right. Uh, it was just something that we wanted to do. We have a center over there, which right. is not very active right now. Uh, so basically it was just us taking our stuff there. But how was the response? It was good, yeah. but it was only within a certain community. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it is, the word doesn't spread that yeah. way because we're not a, we are a non-commercial art for form. For sure. So, and yeah. speaking of, do you think it's important that as as people mm. um we should kind of go out there and try to experience art forms that we we may not know whether we like or not Definitely. just because we're in our own yeah. little bubble. Yeah. 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 I think people Definitely. are it's important. Yeah. Got to get out of that comfort zone. Mm. We do. We do. Time, we do. Right? Yeah. Uh but you know one of your more memorable performances was definitely, you know, the Anka Orchestra. Yeah. Uh and could you probably tell us a little bit more about the you know uh, orchestra itself and and uh, you know what the name actually means okay the Angkor orchestra okay so um many years ago i had this thought about myself as a musician mm -hmm. right because i've always been confused i play the piano yeah. i play indian music on the piano so when a western musician asks me what do you play i say the piano oh so immediately they right. think i'm a classical pianist Probably. i'm right. not right. <laughs> And then an Indian musician will look at me and say, "So you learn Indian music? So what do you play? Yeah. Play the piano?" They'll be like, "Huh?" Yeah. So I'm somewhere in between. So I had this confusion mm. about who I was mm. for many years, and I think that led me to think about who I am as a musician in this country. So I found that as I write music, I like to talk about everything that I've grown up with, yeah. my experiences that I've. Uh, kind of imbibed into my work. Right, right. So that was what led me to um, kind of embark on this idea for the Angkor Orchestra. Right. So Angkor means sprout. Okay. Okay.